As a parent, there are so many things you should look for when you're considering a child care center or daycare, nanny, whatever it might be, to make sure that your child is going to be safe, but also thriving in that environment. And when I talked about in my previous video, the ratios that exist in most daycares, it does sound like a lot, right? It sounds like a lot to have three infants to one teacher. That is a lot of kids, right? Especially when they're really young and they're small babies who have naps and bottles and diapers, etc. However, what I will say about daycare centers is there are schedules, there are assistant teachers, there's directors, assistant directors, and there's often a structure in place. And so my original critique on the video that I stitched is that she probably doesn't understand how daycares operate, right? She was complaining about outside time or walking to a park, and especially for young infants. Oftentimes those things have to happen around the needs of the children in that room. And so there are very specific times that they go outside. There are very specific times when they do certain activities because they're trying to manage the needs of all of the kids. And that is not to say that teachers are overwhelmed. That is to say that they have to have a system. There is organization, there is a schedule, and that is necessary for them to succeed. I know in my daycare, even come summertime, the amount of work it takes for daycare teachers to put sunscreen on all of the toddlers and preschoolers that need to go out, it's a lot. It's not something that you can just do in five minutes, right? There's nine kids and they all need sunscreen and they need to be taken care of. So it's not just going outside, it's the 30 minutes beforehand, getting them all ready to go outside. Same thing in the winter, our kids go out in the snow. You have to dress nine toddlers to go out in the snow. Oh, that's a lie. And all I'm saying is not that the teachers are overwhelmed because I think oftentimes they are very good at what they do. This is what they went to school for oftentimes, right? But it's that expectations that parents put on them fall outside of what they're able to do in this environment, right? They cannot stay outside for hours on end because there's kids with naps and bottles and meals that they have to get to, right? Some kids can only be outside for certain amounts of time. Some kids have certain allergies, right? Like there's so much they're working with. And so it's important that when you go into a daycare setting, you have flexibility to realize that the teachers are not just there to accommodate your needs, but the needs of all of the children in that classroom. And that can be a lot to deal with. I think Outside of that, obviously, there's red flags you should look for. Anything where uh, teachers are out of ratio, there's too many kids to a teacher, um, people aren't following safety protocols, you're worried about kind of the food that they're giving your child and whether or not they're following um, safety regulations there, you should be worried and always like talk to the other parents, ask them questions, um, peek in, right? Talk to teachers who go there. I am lucky because I worked in the town where my kids go to daycare. And so I actually know their teachers. Like I worked with them in daycare. So I know what they're like and I trust them immensely, but not everybody has that privilege, right? But you can ask the questions. You can be there and you will know. I promise you, you often know when it's unsafe. You uh, often know when a teacher is not well suited and you can bring those things to a director's attention and you can choose not to go to that childcare center. But it is important that we don't mix things that are not safety issues and or within a daycare settings like control with red flags like safety issues and concerns.